This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the first part of the Voter's Guide, we reflected on four fundamental principles to guide our discernment about voting. The dignity of the human person, the common good, subsidiarity, and solidarity. In the second part, we reflected on our responsibility and the government's responsibility to do good. In this third and final part, we will reflect on our responsibility and the government's responsibility to avoid evil. As I said in the two previous messages, I am not telling you how to vote, nor am I supporting any political party or candidate. Rather, I am speaking to moral principles that we are called to embrace, and it is your responsibility to consider prayerfully how to vote in light of these principles. In order to safeguard the dignity of every human person and the common good, we and the government must avoid evil. Evil actions directly threaten the dignity of the human person and the common good of society. Some actions are always evil, and we call them intrinsically evil acts. These include, but are not limited to, abortion, assisted suicide, euthanasia, the destruction of human embryos, human cloning, genocide, torture, the direct and intentional targeting of non-combatants in war, terrorist attacks, racist actions, and redefining marriage contrary to its essential meaning. Since the Supreme Court decision Roe v. Wade, there have been more than 50 million abortions in the United States, a number greater than the entire population of Canada. This underscores the fact that abortion is the gravest issue. In addition, when doing evil is falsely considered a right that ought to be protected, it makes the matter even more serious. Due to the role that the Supreme Court has had in promoting the intrinsic evils of abortion and the redefinition of marriage, it is crucial to examine a candidate's position with regard to the appointment of Supreme Court justices. This would be applicable to the candidates for Senate, which approves the president's nominations, as well as for candidates for president, who nominates the justices. The next president most likely will nominate at least one Supreme Court justice due to the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. And it is possible that the next president could nominate as many as four, since one justice is age 83, another is age 80, and a third is age 78. It is never permissible to commit an intrinsically evil action. Thus, we must never vote for a candidate because a candidate supports an intrinsically evil action. To do so would be to intend to promote evil directly. Moreover, even if we do not support a candidate's position to promote evil, it is not morally permissible to vote for that candidate unless there are truly morally grave reasons to do so. How do we determine whether there are truly morally grave reasons? First of all, in a situation where some candidates promote intrinsically evil acts and other candidates do not, we must choose from the candidates who do not promote intrinsic evils. One might wonder, however, about the situation in which a candidate who promotes an intrinsic evil also has better policies in our judgment to do the good, such as promoting the economy and overcoming poverty, than another candidate who does not promote intrinsic evil. Such a situation does not constitute a morally grave reason for voting for the candidate who promotes evil. As we learned in the last message, there is room for debate on the best way to do good. Differing opinions on the best way to do good 
do not justify involvement in promoting evil. However, there are other situations in which all of the candidates for a given office promote one or more intrinsic evils. In such a situation, a person after careful deliberation could be justified in voting for the candidate who would do the least evil in the person's judgment. This would constitute a morally grave reason for voting for a candidate who promotes an intrinsic evil. To make this judgment on which candidate is likely to do the least evil, we must also consider carefully that some intrinsic evils are graver than others. Another option is the decision not to vote for any candidate for that office. Over these three messages, we have examined four fundamental principles of Catholic social teaching that inform our discernment about voting. The dignity of the human person, the common good, subsidiarity, and solidarity. In addition, we have underscored the obligation to do good and avoid evil. While doing the good is non-negotiable, there is room for legitimate disagreement on the best way to achieve the good. It is also non-negotiable to avoid evil, thus we should not vote for a candidate who promotes intrinsic evil without grave moral reasons. Let us remember to pray for our country in the upcoming elections and ask our Lord to guide us as we exercise our responsibility to participate in public life through exercising our right to vote. This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette.